Democrat member of Parliament. And he
we know and love. And Boris Johnson, Nigel Farage, and the peddlers of hate and division in our country better know that that is what we are going to fight for this coming election. It is our job to make sure this country's heart beats in a liberal and internationalist direction. Not the nationalism, not the populism, not the authoritarianism that we see parroted. This is the new fault line in British politics and this party knows where it stands on all of them. Because we recognise that these things cannot be achieved in isolation. And that the pursuit of individual and social justice doesn't stop at the border. We seek to work together with other liberal democracies who share our values to overcome the cross-border obstacles to achieving our goals. That's what we do. As Ming Campbell means here, actually, where is it? There it is. As Ming said at our conference in 2005, in an inevitably interdependent world, cooperation is not only in our interests, it's essential to our survival. And the best way to protect British interests, he argued, was strong and effective multilateralism. He was right then, and he is still now. That is why we are internationalists. That is why we are pro-European. Liberalism is needed at home to protect personal freedom and liberty. But liberalism and cooperation is also needed abroad to secure peace, promote democracy and defend human rights. If we are elected, we will fight poverty, we will fight oppression, we will fight hunger, ignorance, disease and aggression wherever they occur, and we will seek to promote a free movement of ideas, people, goods and services. Confidence there's no room to construct the kind of community on any of this. The liberal international rule-based order established in the wake of the Second World War, which has underpinned democracy across the globe and guarded against authoritarianism and oppression. The Atlantic Charter of 1941, of which the UK was a signatory, set out the framework for this order, its aims and its values. With the memory of fascism and the threat of communism, Collective security was paramount. The robust national defence, marriage with passionate commitment to social and global justice was the goal. Under the Charter, all countries would have the right to self-determination, all people the right to freedom of speech, of expression, of religion, and freedom from want and fear. The rule of law would be promoted. And this, of course, struck a chord with President Roosevelt's New Deal where nations would collaborate to improve labour standards, economic advancements and social security for And all of that led to the international institutions which facilitate the multilateralism which is essential to maintaining these, this rules-based order today. The United Nations, the World Trade Organization, the IMF, the World Bank, and of course NATO to defend our democracies. In fact, it was in the 1940s that the Liberals were the first UK political party to vote in favour of a European Union. And the EU, once it came into being, evolved to become not only an important linchpin of this order on the continent, but it expanded this order to cover Central and Eastern European states too. In government, we will seek to maximise British influence in all of these institutions and play the most active possible role, because as Liberals, we believe we've got to put our values into action. There'll be no standing back. We're going to be active. <laughs> and there's no better example of this than the late, great Paddy Ashdown, whose life and achievements we remember and honour this week. As the first High Representative in Bosnia, Paddy pulled together multilateral resources and created the political will to push ahead with political reforms. In a lesson that still rings true today, Paddy often liked to say that if the international community is united, there is absolutely nothing we cannot do in the Balkans. But if the international community is divided, there is absolutely nothing we can do in the Balkans. 
Of course, the first thing we will do in government is revoke Article 50 so that once again the British people will resume their role of providing leadership as a full and active member of the European Union. Let 
interesting thing about this is the Tory right, who've taken over that party, they like nothing more than to bang on about incarcerating more and more people who break the law. But strangely, they think there should be a different approach to their law breaking. <laughs>
And as your Liberal Democrat Shadow Foreign Secretary, I can promise you, I will do everything I can to stand up for a truly global Britain. Thank you very much. should all be doing this. This is, this is what we mean. Yes, thank you. Yes, yes. And you enjoyed it, yeah? Yeah, very much. Okay, that was really nice. Yeah. I really liked it as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank wow. Thank you very much. Are you done? Yeah, come in, come in. Hi. Hi. Yes. Huh? No, that's my chief test. Let them come out and then, yes. Right, you can now talk to me. Okay. So, did you enjoy that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, exactly, it's exactly what we need to be saying. Okay, thank you. And what did you like best? The focus on the international. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, mm -hmm. Internationalists, you know. Yes. It's one, it's one plan. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, we're back to history. Yes. The whole human race originated in East Africa. Absolutely. Right? In yeah. Trukana in Kenya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm from Kenya uh, myself. Lovely. Asante sana. Yeah. Thank you and thanks for waiting as yeah. well. Okay. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you lovely. so much. And you are in uh, Hounslow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Yeah. Lovely meeting lovely you. Lovely to meet you. And I'm Juliet Makapila. Juliet. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you, Juliet. And you too. I'll be seeing you later. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Clive. Hi, so you can see we are here in the Liberal Democrats. This is the next one happening. So afternoon agenda, that is um, Siobhan Benita, policy motion tackling the climate together. Uh, speech, Right Honorable Sir Edward Davy, policy motion open Britain policies to support tourism. The next one at, to close is emergency motion Amazon fire. Encouraging all of you and thank you so much, Philip Nyamai. Thank you so much for watching. Zara Shah, thank you so much for watching. And everyone else um, watching, I thank you for taking the opportunity um, to just follow politics. And I encourage you to join any political party, wherever you are, so that we are able to shape this country and get involved in what we believe. For me, it is the Liberal Democrats. And for me, I always say, at least if you've joined any political party, you know you're making a difference wherever you are and shaping up the things. And of course, today I have been voting and making sure that um, some of the things that I care about are really looked into. And I'm also going to try and speak tomorrow. There is um, something that I really want to try and talk about. You know, this issue of stripping off um, people the right of um, British citizen. I hope I get um, to put a card and I hope I get called. Uh, cross my fingers, speak soon. Love you, everyone. Thank you so much. Juliet Makapila, right here in Bournemouth, um, and um, enjoying UK politics as well. Um, there is Shimona as he goes. Um, so you can see. And it was really, really nice to listen to him as well. And you can hear. Uh, he used to be um, in um, Labour and um, he's now um, joined the um, Lib Dem party and today was um, the first time people were expecting to hear from him. So there you go, you've heard his speech. Thank you. See you later everyone. Juliet Makapila.